Having great images in your URI can really make your app stand out. And one common source of these images is loading them from a URL from the web. In order to fetch these images and also show them, we have now a newer tool for iOS 15, which is async image. So I'm going to show you this in this tutorial and some of the limitations and also some custom logic. We will have to write the network calls ourselves and also maybe show some loading animations. For example, in this list, this is one of the apps I had before with cats. This API has a lot of images. So you see when I scroll down, it's loading more images. This is using the async image. And we also talk a little bit about performance optimization because if I here have a long list, okay, here's one canceled. This is one problem with the async image. If I go up again, I already loaded these images, but as you see the animations again, it's loading it again. And with our own custom logic, we can fine tune this a little bit better. We also have to discuss when to start this load. For example, when I go here in the detail view, only when the view appears, I should start this load. And in this case, it's actually a little bit silly because this is the same image here. Right now it's loading the same image again. In order to not load these images all over again, we work with caches. Now let's have a look at the async image that I actually used here. So I can show you the basic implementation. You can get the um, project files from the link in the description. So here in the breed raw, I have one implementation of this async image. In the preview, it doesn't have an image to show, it's just showing the placeholder. And in this case, it's the progress view. So I'm going to uncomment this. I have the information of the URL in this breed here. So this has a image property breed image, which might be nil because maybe the breeds we are fetching doesn't have this property. And this breed image has in turn in, in itself also a string with the URL. You also get the information of the size of this image. So that's why I first have to check if I actually have an image, if my breeds image URL is not nil. And now I can use here this async image and the one, so it has one URL. So this is the basic one, but I also want to resize this image because it only supposed to be 100 by 100 pixels large. So I have to go with one of these content parameters. I use this one, it gives me the async image face. This is the second example. And I'm looking now at the URL content placeholder. So the URL, I have to create your URL from string. And I use here my breeds image force unwrapping because I have, I checked here that I really have an image. Then I get the image itself. So I can now image resizable and scale to fill. I just have to actually use the same one as before because I want to expand it 100 by 100. So, which means that I have to give here the size. Image size, this is this property I already have here. Image size times image size. I don't need to have the alignment because it's anyway centered. And then because now it would overflow this 100 by 100 square, I use a clip, clip modifier. And then as the placeholder, we can use the progress view. And for example, I can use again here the same placeholder area. It's the same because I use the same placeholder. I'm going to run this. So this is again the placeholder runs and the images appear. Also continuously loads if I scroll down. This is because this breed raw is in a list, which is lazily loading. And the way this image is actually loaded because now if I scroll down, you see again this loading animations for the a part that appears again. And only when this appears in the UI, in the visible area of your UI, then we are starting this fetch. Because otherwise we would fetch the whole array of these this images. And it may take some time until all of them come back. This one is gray because it doesn't actually have a URL. So I used here just this gray box. Now one problem, I need to create here an error. So some of them they're loading still depending on the internet connection. So for example, here I'm actually fetching the same image as the square and in the detail I use the same URL and this image doesn't appear. So something, something seems to be not optimal because I don't really know what's happening. Sometimes it's just errors. If I have here errors, because I'm using here a placeholder, which means that no matter if I have an error or if I'm actually actively loading, I don't know, it looks always the same. And this is why this other initializer with the face is actually a little bit better. So I'm just taking this one out again. It's very much similar to this one. 
So this is the initializer that I had with URL and content. And in this case, I get the image face. You can also have a look at the documentation and the help because this is giving you another example. So first I'm checking which of my faces I have. If I have an image, if my face's image is not there, then I show the image again here with the resizing. If I have an error, this is different to before because now I have access to the error. I'm showing the error's localized description, what I expose as to, to the user. And in the foreground, I just here add the color and same frame. If I don't have an image and if I have no error, I'm probably in the loading state. And that's why I show here the progress view. Looks really similar, I'm still loading. All my images are coming. And now oh, you see all these cancelled ones. The good thing in this case, my internet connection is right now really slow because I collected another one. If you scroll down, it starts loading again. The problem is once they're cancelled, I need to scroll out and in again in order... Well, actually this doesn't work. It seems not to be so easy to start some of the cancelled ones again. You need to scroll up and down, which basically means the view is disappearing and then recreated. That's why I don't have here access to start this loading again. For example, if I go here to the detail, it's loading this image, I'm happy I go back. I have now here these two cancelled ones. I would need to, the user would need to scroll back outside. And this is not really what I want. I'm guessing the reason behind this cancelled here is that the async image starts loading these images as soon as they appear. This is the on appear view modifier. Just trying to remember what they did. So you have the on appear modifier. They're probably starting loading for image from URL. And when, because this might be a lot of data and the user might not need this, when this view disappears, we are stopping. They're stopping this call. So they use the on disappear to stop this. This is why if I go down, I load here a lot of images. I can, if, if I wait, they're coming. But if I leave my main list and go directly to a detail view, my main list, these views, disappear and these calls are cancelled. This is why it's probably not the best solution to use this async images in a list where you go to a detail because now I have all this cancelled stuff which is really not nice. Right now I'm using quite large images here. You could improve this if you have smaller images thumbnail size. They should come back faster. You cannot assume that the user has a certain bandwidth data because for example maybe the user is on a limited bandwidth this might take quite a long time and then everything is still cancelled and ideally I would like to know as a programmer I have access to redo this, recall this so the use case for this async image and a list with navigation links might not be the best but for example, here our detail view, this is really use case for this because we are only loading this as soon as this view appears. And if I choose to leave this detail view before the image comes back, the loading is cancelled. So we are not fetching more than we have to. This is very nice. Now that I showed you the implementation of async image and some of the limitation and my guesses of how it's actually working in the background, why we have this behavior. It's not going to be interesting to implement this logic ourselves. Also, I'm guessing most people want to support also lower iOS versions. So either you want to have lower iOS versions, then you would be interested in this custom logic or you want to have more control over it. Okay, now you see here this async image. So I want to have also this three kind of states, a loading state, an error state, and a data state, a success state. So we have to have on the one side the image and also a view model to fetch this data. So I'm creating here a new file. This is the Swift UI view, image loading view. And I need to have the view model for fetching the image. So this is what I'm doing in, the, in my network folder. This is a Swift file for the view model. This is the image loader. I'm going to start with this class class image 
has to be an observable object because we have Swift UI. So what we need is first of all the URL. So this is a string, might be nil. Then the property I care about is a add published var image. This is a UI image. Might be nil, I might not have an image in the beginning. A clone planes now that I have to have an initializer. If URL string optional and I'm setting my URL into this URL. And then from the async image, we had the image. I also want to know which state I am in case of an error. So we're going to have here the a property that holds the information that we might want to show to the user. So this is error message. This is a string optional because maybe I don't have a problem. And then the last information I want to make sure I want to know if I'm in the loading state. So this is add published var is loading. This is a bool and in the beginning I prom this is probably false, it's not loading. So now I have all the information that I need to load this and we create can write the function to fetch this image. In order to deal with these errors, I already had in the where I used this declared here an API error, so my own error type. With the case of bad URL, bad response, URL error, passing error, and an un unknown error. And I also added here some localized descriptions that we can show to the user, for example, and some descriptions that we can use for debugging. So I'm going to use this error again. Okay, the first thing I need to check is if I actually have an URL. God let URL. This is a URL. Else, if I have no URL, I'm going to put on the error message a error description. So this is error message, my API error. And in this case, it's the bad URL dot localized description. So I'm just add using the descriptions that I already have. And I'm returning. If I have, because I don't need to continue fetching, if I don't have a URL, then I need to create my task from URL session dot shared dot data task with URL and completion handler. So I'm using now the URL that I actually have. And this is actually here only the string. So if I if my string is not nil then I can create the URL. So let fetch URL this URL from a string. This is the URL parameter I have here. And this is the URL that I can use to fetch. I get the data back, the response and the error. And I had actually have to start this task or resume this task. So now we have to go through the cases of our response. If I have an error, if that error is not nil, then I'm setting here my set that error message to the errors localized description. Else, if my response, then I wanted to check the response and the status code actually. So I first have to typecast the response, let response, and I'm typecasting this response as a HTTP response because now I can get the status code. And this is supposed to be between 200 and 299. So if I'm not in this range, or if this does not contain my responses status code, then I know I shouldn't proceed because something went wrong. So in this case, I'm setting my error message to API error with bad response of the responses status code and the localized description. Else, if I don't have an error, if my status code is okay, then I can check the data. Else, if let data is data. So we have something and we can use this data to create a new UI image from it with the initializer UI image from data. And now I can set myself dot image to this image. And else, if I don't, if nothing of this is working, I set my error message to an API error unknown localized description. Now all of these properties that I set here are used in the UI and my URL session returns me on a background thread. So I have to first go back to the main queue, dispatch queue dot main dot async. 
So now I took care of the error messaging, the error messages and the images, but I never changed my is loading state. So after I checked, I have a URL and before I start here my URL session to fetch this, I'm going to say my is loading is true. And I'm going to reset my error message because maybe um, we are retrying this the second time. So when I return here all my data, I should also serve dot is loading, set this is loading to false again. Now we have all the data and the state that I wanted and I have this function to fetch. We also need to discuss when to fetch this. And I'm going to use this view model now in my image loading view. So this is a state object because it's a view model var image loader and this is a image loader. So this needs to have the um, URL and I'm going to create here an initializer for this image loading view with a an URL. This is a string optional and then I can set myself dot under bar image loader to create here a new state object from web value. This is an image loader and giving here this URL. So this is how I, I use a custom initializer in this view to handle, to create this state object, this image, this view model and give it the right URL. So just going to write here now. Now we can decide how to um, prepare our UI. And I pretty much want to do the same as in the redraw here with this async image with this three states. So this is the async image and I'm going to also check if I have an image. So if my image loaders image is not nil, then I want to show this image. So image loaders image. This is a UI image and in Swift UI we have to use image which has an initializer from UI image. So so I don't need to handle down too many types here. Can do the same scale to fill and the same, actually just the same here, this frame and this clipped. And then I need to have here this image size too. Okay, now I have the image state and I have to force unwrap this, but I know that I have an image in this case. Else if my image loader's error message is not nil. Then I can show this and text image loaders error message force unwrapping because I have the text. I can use the same styling here with this foreground color pink and the frame and then else I'm going to show also a progress view. Now that I have all these three cases the next thing I probably should actually do is start the fetch. And I didn't want to call fetch an initializer because I want to make this lazily only when this view appears. So we can add here a on appear. I could add the on appear to the progress view, but this would mean that in case of an error, I wouldn't try to refetch this. I'm going to embed these cases in a group because then I can add the on appear to the group dot on appear. So we are going to start fetching when this view appears. And so I can tell the image loader to fetch, but maybe I should only do this in certain cases. So I had here the case that I only start this fetch if I have a URL, but maybe there is already an image, then I don't need to fetch this. So I add here another guard statement. I do this in the view model just to make sure I don't need to, I try to put more logic in here because this might be, this fetching is probably quite useful for different situations. And so I'm checking first if the image is nil, only then I'm proceeding else I return. Or if I'm not already loading, then I should also start this fetch. So the, if the image is nil and is loading is false. So that should make sure that I don't fetch here too many things. No, my loading view start fetching this also when I have an error. If for whatever reasons I have an error and this view appears again, then I would start also the fetch again. Now in my breed draw, I had here this async image and I'm going to replace this now with my custom image, image loading view from URL. And this is the breeds 
image force abruptly because I have the image URL. Uh, I did not, I forgot to use resizable. <laughs> yes, so I have to use here resizable, that's why they were still so big. We know they're looking better. If I scroll down, you still see the animation. And if I go to the detail and back. Yeah, okay, so I have here one problem because some of these loadings. So this is coming back for views that might be delocated. So I have to make this here a weak self. So this has to be all question marks. I probably should do some more things with the URL session to stop this task. So I'll go to the detail, it's still loading and go back. But you see it's still loading, even though I go to the detail before it finished loading everything. This is still using the um, async image. The next thing that I want to optimize is not loading the same images all over again. Because if I scroll here, it already s loaded the images that were just a little bit lower. But if I scroll there, it's loading them again. You can see this here in the inspector. If I go for the networking one, you can check how much networking, how much data I'm actually downloading. So for example, if I scroll up here, this is my scrolling up and it fetches the same images again. So I would like to store them because especially in this list, I probably know that the user scrolls up and down, might scroll up and down. So I would like to cache them or temporarily store them. And we can do this when we load these images here because I have the possibility to either customize, to either set something on the URL session, which is a shared instance. I might not want to do this. I just want to cache this in case I'm fetching images. And there's an easier approach when we use a request. So this is a URL request from URL with cache policy. So the URL is still my fetch URL and the cache policy is return cache data or load. You can also define a timeout if you don't want to wait forever. And now when I create my data task, I use with this request. Now my images are actually pretty big. You can check this here by printing the data. So this is in bytes. So this would be 300 kilobyte or 0 0.3 megabyte or half a megabyte is this image. So they're quite large. The URL session, the cache that it's using has um, a fixed size. So we can check this. I'm not going to do this here. I'm doing this in the breed list view. I just need to set this caches once. Just need to check this once. So here in the on appear or when your application launches, you can also do this. We're going to check how large the URL cache actually is shared. So this is the shared instance is also the URL session is using memory capacity. So I'm printing cache size because I don't want to show this here in bytes. I'm going to divide this by 1024 and then this would be kilobytes. I get the statement that my cache size is 500 kilobytes or so half a megabyte. And <laughs> all my images are, even one of these images might be larger than that. So that's why I'm not perfectly using here my cache. I would like to increase this for this application or I mean, ideally I would probably would use different images. You can change the URL cache, shared memory capacity to a larger size. So I'm going to decrease this now by to 1000 by 1024. So this is one megabyte times 512. So this would be half a gigabyte, which hopefully does help. You can also see this in under here, the disks usage or the memory usage, because this is going to go up quite a bit now. If you scroll down, it's just loading these images and it keeps it in memory. Okay, now the test would be to go up again and these images are still there. So I don't load them again. You might either check this on the networks and see here that it is not coming up again. 
And you can see this under the memory consumption. So even if I scroll down a little bit, it doesn't, doesn't fetch anything. So if I scroll down, you see now it started fetching again. I know I go up again and these images are still there. So these ones, the ones that are just closest, the ones that it was previously loading are still there in the caches. And only if I scroll a lot further, then it starts fetching again, just because of the limit of these NS caches. The memory usage here <laughs> shows the usage for my Mac because the simulator is using the CPU of the of Mac, which means that my maximum is 16 gigabytes. <laughs> if you test this with a device, it's probably better because you understand more what the limitation of certain devices are, especially if you have an older one. So you understand uh, maybe what a good number for this is, but I assume that here this is probably good enough. Some of these metrics are just nicer to check on device. Also, I did check it on real device. In the simulator, the scrolling it doesn't feel so smooth, but it's just because it's a little bit slow on my Mac. And on the device, it's really smooth. I did use here this custom image loading view. You can also make this a little bit more reusable by um, maybe letting the user customize in different situations the images. But I already made this quite reusable because the main fetching logic is in my view model. So you can decide this. For example, I said maybe I want to stop some of the fetches that I don't need anymore. I kept on going in this case. But it's important to only load these images once the view appears. So that's why I always start to load in the on appear view the modifier. And the same is true if you use this for a navigation link, especially then, because maybe this image might be even bigger. So always make sure that you, with these images, because they're so expensive, that you use a lot of lists or lazy loading, and then only load in the on appear. I can show you a weird effect where this doesn't work. In order to demonstrate the problems, I'm using here the waterfall grid repository where I made this kind of waterfall um, layout. So for example, I might want to have my cat images also in this nice layout, like this kind of style because all these images have different aspect ratios. And this is kind of a layout that makes lots of very good use of this. I use this. First, I uh, used a different endpoint actually from the cat API. This is the endpoint where you can fetch different images. Here, getting the endpoint for images. And down here, and in this case, I set a limit of nine. You can also set which breed you want to have the images for. And then maybe I just take this one out. You can also say which image sizes you want to have. So I'm just specifying that, what I've, that I want to have nine images. And then here the URL would be this, the base URL with the endpoint images search. And I set here query of limit nine. I get back an array of these image types. So I want to show in this view all these images that I just fetched. In this case, I used here, again, you can use an async image or loading view. And in order to show this grid, I'm using this waterfall grid. And you can set here grid styles. For example, I want to have two columns in portrait mode and three columns in landscape mode, the spacing and the animation and in which scroll direction. So mine is scrolling vertically. So that's where you see here these little animations of these images. So I have here one for each of these images, a card with a preset dimension. Could also probably use the one that I receive from the JSON. And when they appear, I start loading them and then it sets the dimensions. This set here in portrait two columns and landscape three. So if I rotate this, it rearranges them. So this part is quite nice. Now I want to fetch more when I scroll down because right now I only have nine. This is why I here have a scroll view. And inside the scroll view, I have on one side this regret and then one progress view. So when the progress view appears, then I'm fetching more images or image data from the endpoint. That's why you see this here. And then again, my default images. 
and then more and more of them coming back. But you saw when I reloaded this, you saw this jumping behavior of rearranging everything. And then I'm again at the last position in my scroll view. And this is, you see this jumping things? <laughs> this is because this view is not lazily loading them. The yeah, iPad is probably good if you have some data that is limited, but it's definitely not good for infinite scrolling views with images where you constantly add more images at the button. Just need to go in the waterfall grid file because here you can see the implementation. We have a geometry reader, this is because it needs to know how to lay out them. And there's the main thing is the self, the grid. So this is creating here this views and they're um, applied in a Z stack. So it's looping for all of the data that is available, creates the content or our images, sets the frame alignment. Part of this, how they lay it out is with preferences or here this alignment guides. And down here is the way it calculates where to place these views. Every time some of these views changes their frames, this on preference change here is called and it's calculating again this grid and sets the alignment guides and the grid height. So this is why um, you might have watched the WWDC call mystifying a Swift UI, where they talked about view uniquely identifying views to make sure that things are not laid out more than you wanted. But unfortunately this is happening. Part of the problem is in order to calculate the grid and where views are laid out, because right now it's in the Z stack, they would be on top of each other. Every time I'm receiving one of my images, the layer needs to be recalculated and then the views are moved. And in some cases, because SwiftUI tries to figure out if it should lay out only, re redraw only one of these views or the whole thing. In some cases, it recreates this whole view again. When I reload the whole list further down again. So that's why you saw that it recreates everything. It's reloading everything. It's creating all the views again and then everything jumps around. In order to create this layout, this has to draw all of the views and recalculate the position of all of these views, which means that I, every time I have more views in this array, every time you have more data in this array, the whole process might start all over again. This is not a very well performing API. This is not a very well um, suited API if you have large arrays of images or this infinite scrolling because then we get this jumping behavior. It's much better to work with lazy loading. So this waterfall API is not good if you want to have this infinite scrolling behavior because then you have some jumping maybe in between. The best performing option for this kind of layouts is probably to drop down to UIKit with UI collection views. This is probably a significant amount of work. There is also an easier alternative with lazy VStacks and reorganizing your code. The main reason why I wanted to show this example is to make you be more aware of that it does matter how you load things and when you load things to have this smooth loading during scrolling. And the other example that I showed you was the using the caches to store these images longer and not to throw them away too fast so we don't fetch things too often. You also have the possibility to use lazy vgrid, so grid views. The only thing with these is that you don't have this nice waterfall design. So for example, here in the photos app, this layout with this fixed rows can be done. It's also possible to create more complex UIs of having different sections on the home screen to showing some of the images in grids, some of them under sections. For example, this API, we could use the head categories to show cats with heads. So in this section, we would allow the user to scroll horizontally, just to scroll a couple of these images and then scroll further down and do a different section. So it's possible to create quite complex UIs with combinations of lists, scroll views, grids, and stacks. Don't forget to like this video. If you enjoyed talking about images, let me know if you have an example of a more complex UI that you want me to try to implement. Until next time, happy coding.